So very quickly, there's three laws. Let's talk about them. First law, stuff keeps doing what it's doing. Now, you can look for more formal definitions, but this is a good one. Google it if you want to see what Newton said. So examples of this, if an object is just sitting there on the ground, it's going to keep sitting on the ground. It's not going to suddenly start moving. Now, it also means that all of the forces in this must be in equilibrium. So there's a force downwards, and then there's a reaction force upwards, and they must be equal to each other. Now, the other version of this, if someone gave that object a push and it was moving in that direction, it would keep moving in that direction forever. Now, I know you think that sounds strange because, hey, I've pushed objects before and they stop eventually. That's because of the friction of it on the ground and that slows it down, slows it down, slows it down until it stops. In Newton's world, when we're talking about this stuff, we can ignore that friction and we can say that in a frictionless vacuum, this thing will keep going on and on and on forever if you give it a little push. Now, the only forces acting on it after you've pushed it, so you've pushed it, you're not pushing it anymore, you just gave it a little tap, are that force down and that force down. So, things will stay still if they're staying still. Things will keep moving in a straight line once you've given them a push until something happens. Stuff keeps doing what it's doing unless new force applied until something happens, same idea. Our second rule, a little bit more formal here, force is directly proportional to the change in momentum. The more force you apply, the faster something will speed up or the faster something will slow down depending on whether you are shoving the rock or whether the rock is coming at you and you're slowing it down. The force that you apply is directly proportional to the rate at which the um, momentum is changing. Now, when we follow this through to its conclusion, we get that the force is equal to some constant k times the change in momentum. And then we can also say that force is equal to uh, k and then the rate of change of uh, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Now, given the mass of an object doesn't change, the derivative of mv, we can move that m, because m is a constant, out here. So we get km, the derivative of velocity, and we know that the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So we get f equals kma. Pretty cool, There's, that's good. We can go one step further though. Now because k is some arbitrary constant, what we've done cleverly is come up with some unit of force that means that this k value can be 1. And that unit of force that we use is the newton. So as long as we're measuring force in newtons, we don't have to write f equals kma. We can write f equals ma as long as force is measured in newtons. And that brings us to the third one. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is probably the most famous one. So, if you push a door, the door pushes back on you. If you're standing on the ground, you're exerting force on the ground, and the ground is exerting force on you. If those two were not equal and opposite, then you would sink down into the center of the earth, or float up into the sky. This idea is a particularly important one that we'll need. Um, if there is an object sitting on the ground, then mass times gravity is the force that's being exerted on the Earth, but mass times gravity is also the reaction force. This is equal to this equal and opposite. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, I just needed to talk about these three. Uh, in a future video, we're going to do some calculations with all of this stuff.